Welcome back everyone, Nick and Lex here. Thank you so, so much for joining me today to this new episode of Music with Nick. This is a epic pick and this was picked by Steven. Thank you so much, Steven, for your support, for your love uh, towards the channel. And um, we all know that you're a Dan member, so uh, I appreciate you, you know, sponsoring this specific video. Um, thank you so, so much. And I'm very, very uh, curious, uh, Wishbone Ash, you know, we've heard some really, really great tracks by Wishbone Ash. So I can't wait what this one is um, going to bring at 11 minutes and 34 seconds. I'm down for the, for the ride. This is called Handy. And this is, I think, uh, what I would consider the um, uh, their first album. Uh, Wishbone Ash, the album 1970, self-titled. And yeah, this is the epic one on the album. Again, if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for dropping by, uh, for checking it out. If you like the video, give it a like, maybe subscribe to the channel. And, uh, you know, we always like to thank people sponsoring the videos, of course. So if you want to shout out, uh, you give Steven a shout out for you know, putting in that extra help. Thank you so much. I appreciate everyone. Yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Um, I'm going to pull up Wishbone Ash as I always do. I'm going to pull him up here on Wikipedia in a second once we get the song going. But yeah, let's get into it. Um, Wishbone Ash with the song called Handy. Again, thank you so much for the support. Here we go. just have to talk about that bass solo that was wonderful and i've all i've already talked about wishbone ash in other videos you know that there were a big you know um influence on i mean even the eagles judas priest iron maiden van halen leonard skinner then lizzie metallica dream theater overkill opeth i mean every like big band has at least one mentioned once wishbone ash as an influence i can see how this might have influenced you know um cliff burton and the solo he plays on kill em all metallica uh, but also iron maid maybe steve harris this is a, just a beautiful thing to have a bass solo start the song and then these beautiful guitar melodies right here let's go back a little bit wonderful so far great chef's kiss
beautiful harmony guitar. Sending this one to Alexia right now. harmonies like in thirds like they're doing here very iron maiden very judas priest you know started doing it on um, the twin guitar i love how both guitars were doing their own little thing and then joining together in the harmony and the bass was like it's not just playing the notes it was actually you know jamming over the chord progression beautiful man uh i love that also that snare drum um the whole like drum sound sounds very good great recording i just sent it to alexia she's um she's gone for the day and um she's gonna love this i i i love how alexia has just like a he literally awaken or awoken awaken <laughs> been awoken she listens to the craziest stuff now she loves prog rock she loves metal she loves rock she loves all kinds of stuff that i never thought she would listen to and it's it's a blessing it's a blessing that after this channel you know she is just in a different headspace all right let's keep going here <music>
That was totally planned. So I was like, wow, I love that the, this vamp that they're creating with that same chord. And then the guy was a little bit, he was already playing, you know, the, the harmony part. And it sounded a little bit outside, you know, on purpose. And then the the other guitar player came in with the with the higher harmony part, and then it sounded beautiful. And the bass, so obviously that was planned. I mean, that would be just too much if that was a coincidence. But sometimes players are, you know, so connected that. Uh, but I mean, this is a studio recording. I'm sure they planned it for more efficiency, but I've seen that stuff happen live as well. You know, like Chick Corea, electric band, stuff like that, that just crazy musical stuff starts to happen. Like, uh, but wow, uh, I can see how this has been, could have been, would have been so influential. 1970, man, like just when Black Sabbath was coming out, Led Zeppelin had released a couple of albums. This was pushing, you know, in a different direction. Really, really cool. Very melodic, proggy stuff. And not too proggy. Not like, uh, you know, like Yes or, or anything in that direction. Like Gentle Giant. It's not too much. It's still something that you can listen to. That everybody kind of like can, can, can uh, listen along. Uh, not that you can't do that with Yes. But with Yes, it's just it, it challenges your... You know, you're, I think, I, I think those bands like Gentle Giant or Yes or King Crimson were very challenging ELP for the, for the new listener, you know, because it was brand new. That kind of music was just like, what is going on? Now, we, of course, love it because we're used to it. But um, I think this was just easier to get into at that time. Wonderful. I'm trying to pause a little bit every time they kind of like, are done with some sort of section. So I hope I'm not butchering the song, but this is the only time I can... If if I speak at the end of the video, I mean, I can't remember 12 minutes, everything that happened, you know. It is a reaction video, guys. Sorry. I'll leave you the link to the full, uh, to the full track in the description, all right? Cool.
Part was so unexpected. The bass walk, the jazz, the doodle pop, doop, doop, doodle bam, Man, I love, I love a good scat. You know, um, so cool. The whole thing was just fantastic. So much bass work here by um Bob Skeet on this album. I know those are the current members. Let's look at the first album. Let's see because I he also saw John Wheaton. Um. Or Wetton. I'm sorry if I'm butchering names that I'm, I'm famous for doing that. No, we had Martin Turner on bass and vocals on this album, Andy Powell on lead guitar and vocals, Ted Turner on lead guitar and vocals, and Steve Upton on drums, piano by Matthew Fisher. Wow, what a great freaking track. Uh, it says here the band opened for Deep Purple in early 1970. Deep Purple. Deep Purple's guitarist Richie Blackmore was jamming during the band's soundtrack when Wishbone uh, guitarist Andy Powell joined in and began jamming with Blackmore. After the show, Blackmore recommended that MCA Records sign the band. Deep Purple producer Derek Lawrence produced this album, which featured elements of blues, jazz, progressive rock, and psychedelic improvisation completely. The first side contains three up-tempo tracks, along with the ballad, Errors of My Way, which unusually, which unusually for a rock song was written in 12-8 time signature. Uh, side 2 contains two lengthy tracks featuring long instrumental passages, the second of which, Phoenix, was to become a live favorite, often stretching in excess of 17 minutes. I love it. For example, on their live from Memphis EP, and the live dates album. So they, uh, uh, unfortunately, they don't talk about Handy, but hey, it doesn't matter. This was a great track, wonderful. I love the cover, how simple it is. You know, I think it's one of those slingshots. I could be wrong, but uh, released in December of 1970, recorded in September, so just two months prior, uh, three months prior. September, October, November. Um, okay, whatever. Um, this was great. Thank you so, so much again, Stephen. This was a banger. I love these kind of, you know, um, requests. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's going to get a lot of love. Let Stephen know how hard he rocked with this one, you know, to uh, requesting this. And yeah, you know, let get, let's get the conversation uh, going. That's what I look forward to the most when I release a video, you know, I know not everything is not all the requests are for everyone, you know, some of them get very few views. It's not about the views, but I mean, the people that do get it. Um, it's just a beautiful thing. So again, thank you so much, Stephen, for this wishbone request. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you. Thanks to everyone. I hope to see you in the next one.